excited about our newest addition to the Today family, even though Charlie's clearly not excited to be on with me. And Billy, right now, he's asleep. Aww. He's being trained, of course, uh, with the help of America's Vet Dogs. And if you're bringing a new pup home, it can certainly be a lot of work. So we want to help you out. Man after my own heart. Look at that. It's beautiful. Dr. Heather Lenzer is here, veterinarian from the American Animal Hospital Association. We also have some adorable dogs from the North Shore Animal League of America, all up for adoption and looking for good homes. Dr. Lenzer, good morning. Good morning. Hi. Okay, so if you have a Charlie in your house, yeah. new to the house, yeah. first week, got to get to the vet. You do, we, because the veterinarian's going to screen them for any congenital problems they could be born with. Look for things like fleas, intestinal parasites, and an older dog, heartworm disease. Mm -hmm. Then everyone's, all, just like with babies, we're all about vaccines. Yeah. What do you do? What do you vaccinate for? Not every dog needs every vaccine. So your veterinarian's going to ask, do you, are you going to go hiking? Are you going to be swimming? So make sure you tell your vet what the dog's lifestyle is going to be like. And moving on to chips. Both yes. of my dog has a chip. Good. Yeah. That's good. And because yeah, one in too. I have many dogs and many chips. Yeah. One, in, one in three uh, pets will get lost in their lifetime. And having a microchip in them will increase them being returned to you yeah. by about 200%. Yeah. So what a vet does to, to learn whether or not a dog is, is, has a chip, we take the scan. We scan it, it beeps, and then we get this yep. number back. Well, it doesn't say my name, doesn't say where I live, it just gives me the actual number of the okay. microchip. So you have to make sure your microchip is registered. And you do want to also make sure that you found a veterinarian you're comfortable with. Uh, look for one that's accredited by the American Animal yeah. Hospital Association. All right, Doc, right? 80% of dogs have dental disease by the age three. of three. Oh, three crazy. years old. So the best thing to do with these young puppies is get them used to the toothbrush. Have them enjoy it. So mm -hmm. I like finger brushes. Pop that on your finger. Perfect. And then use like peanut butter or chicken yeah. toothpaste. And just let them lick it off the, the, the toothbrush. Chicken toothpaste? So you don't I have to scrub. <laughs> you do eventually. But when they're early, you know, everything with puppies, you just want to be really positive. Okay. So just have them just lick have it them right lick now. It off. That's a good tip. Okay. Yeah. Next We've step. got leashes here. We do. So um, I'm a big fan of having a leash that you can tether to yourself, especially when they're young. Uh -huh. This way you, they don't get lost and wander off in the house and have accidents on the carpet. So these ones are really strong. They're made with marine grade rope and they have clips on the end of them where you can tether them, wrap them around your body. The other so they one, go with you around the house. They do. They do. I've never seen, never seen this before. And then these ones have grommets. You can actually tie them to like a chair leg or a tree or something like that so that if you have to leave them for just a second, you can be hands-free. Okay, that's super but smart. But what's even more important is also having a, something to connect the dog to the leash that will make them good walkers. Big complaint with people is that their dog works, walks poorly on the leash. So look for something like a head collar where the uh, loop actually connects to the front of the dog. That keeps them from pulling hard. We have our little friend Jackson down here who's wearing a harness. It's a nice yeah. shiny harness and it has a, a loop at the front. Uh -huh. Again, that decreases pulling substantially. Like right. My dog is three pounds and we have the harness. How do you know what, what, type of harness, what type of leash or collar is best for your dog? Well, I'm a big fan of anything that, nothing that connects to the back okay. because that really promotes them pulling. It's like attaching a horse to a cart. Oh. So we want something at the front, either underneath their nose okay. or like this little guy in front of them. Show us this, we have, we have just a short Okay, gorgeous of bowls here. We, these are made of recycled glass. Glass is one of the safest things you can put food into, and they're very, very... Okay. These ones are great for on the go, so they're collapsible, made of recycled fire hoses. Okay. But now let's talk about having fun with our dogs. If dogs like a lot of uh, balls, mm -hmm. then you can drop balls in this. Oh, and then shoot it. Oh, and that's like shoot. a tennis ball machine for, right. uh, in the backyard. It is. And, and so you can, bring, you can, and then you can train your dog to bring it to you. You can use this with kids, and, too. Exactly. All right. And then we've got lots of rubber toys here. You want something sturdy that can that okay. the dog really works hard to get the food out, keeps them busy. And you jam food into it. You do. Doc, we can... And you, you got to see this one, though. Yeah. We've got a bubble machine here that bacon. kicks out okay. bacon-scented bubbles. We bacon want to thank bubbles. And you are Animal League America for bringing these adorable puppies who are all, by the way, up for adoption. Please head to today.com to find out more about oh the God. pups. Billy is eating bacon-flavored like bubbles. Bacon. And we are back in a moment. This is Today on NBC. Please go check out the